Hey guys, Gino from Gino's Trains. I want to welcome everybody back to the channel. I uh, hope everybody's enjoying the summer. Uh, man, has it been hot here in Alabama. Uh, we've been up uh, close to or in the triple digits off and on all week. And it's just been just about too hot to do anything. Uh, but, uh, we are uh, going to start a little video series here. Uh, most of you know uh, I've been building some uh, O-scale two-rail uh, wood chip hoppers and have had a lot of questions and inquiries about how I go about doing that. So I figured uh, we would just do uh, build one and videotape it uh, from start to finish. Hopefully, uh, people will get something out of that. Now you can do these these same uh, the same process that I'm using for these old scale cars. Uh, you can use for HO as well. Uh, if you just got if you've got the time to cut out these little small individual pieces that go about making this up. Uh, and I said it'll work for HO scale too. Now at Walther's. Uh, they, you know, produce the 100-ton Greenville-style chip hoppers, uh, like this one that I did in HO, or in O-scale. Uh, but these are not commercially produced for O-scale in two-rail or three-rail. And when I say O-scale from here on out, I am referring to two-rail, because that's what I am modeling now. Uh, nothing against the three-railers, but, uh, you know, the, just when I say O-scale, know that I'm referring to two-rail. Uh, but this is what we're going to be building. Now there were several different versions of these that Greenville made. Now this here is the 100 uh, ton chip hopper for Southern. Uh, and like I said, Walther's produces an HO scale version of this car. Uh, but what we're going to be doing today is the 70 ton wood chip hopper. Now there's just um, little differences in this. Uh, these cars are a little bit shorter, about 12 feet shorter than the 100 ton cars. And the uh, the waffles on the side of the car are a different arrangement. I got the little bulge, bulges uh, on the sides of these cars. It's a little different arrangement. But other than that, uh, it's the same. Uh, and we're going to, like I said, we're going to cover this from start to finish. Uh, and show you how I do it from making the master car side to pouring the mold to casting them, the sides and resin uh, and whatnot and we'll go all the way through putting it together, weathering it and uh, showing the finished model. So I hope you enjoy following along and I said I hope you uh, can find something useful in this series. Uh, but uh, to begin with, uh, we're going to start with the uh, making the master car side. Uh, now I have already put this one together but I'm going to fix them to explain it to you and I've got some still pictures that will show the process as well. But to begin with what you're going to need is go to Walmart or whatever big box store and get you uh, some of the large for sale signs. Uh, you can get one car out of one sign uh, but I buy them four or five at a time because I use so much styrene. A whole lot cheaper uh, than ordering it from some of the styrene distributors. Uh, it's the same stuff. Uh, get you a, a for, for sale sign uh, and you're going to need some uh, balsa wood Just, uh, you can get Hobby Lobby, I order mine off of eBay, I get it in bulk that's the little thin balsa wood uh, and you're going to need some evergreen 6x6 strips this is evergreen product number 8606 8606 and that will get you started. Uh, and what you're going to also need, if you have access to it now, I was fortunate enough to uh, be able to download a whole book of Southern Railway uh, car diagrams. Uh, unfortunately, the modeling site for Southern Railway is no longer in existence, but I have a, a PDF file if you're modeling Southern or Norfolk Southern. Uh, that I can email you. It's got all. It's got it, all the cars, descriptions, diagrams that they had, uh, and it's. Uh, they're not blueprints, but you can get some useful information off of them. 
Uh, and what we're going to be using today is the uh, Southern Railway uh, 70 ton Greenville style uh, wood chip hopper. Uh, and you can see it's got all the dimensions on there that you'll need to measure off for scaling it out. All the measurements are there. Uh, it's even got what uh, what type uh, wheel sets it's got. These were built in 1966. Uh, it's car numbers uh, Southern Railway 13-1950 through 13-1999 uh, is the number series for these cars. Uh, and these are uh, these are old cars. Most of them are being sold off or being retired now. Uh, but uh, there's still a couple of them around. They're pretty ragged. Uh, but I, I saw one on a, on a train the other day. So there's still a few of them in service. But this is what we're going to be building. Uh, so you, you'll get your dimensions off of that uh, spec sheet. And uh, I'll show up, put up a picture here now of how I drew it off on the back of this uh, for sale sign. Uh, uh, used the measurements from the sheet and translated it to the styrene. And, and cut it out and come up with my car side. Uh, now these are, I use the uh, balsa wood on the back just to give it some support uh, and a little depth when we get ready to pour the mold. Uh, and I said this is, I won't use this to build the car, this is just a master side to make a mold or something. Now if you're actually building the car you could just do this duplicate it twice and use these three car sides uh, if you're just building one uh, you know but I'm gonna build several of these and, and in order to save from having to cut out these little side braces uh, for four or five cars I can just do, do it once and make a mold and cast the side and then I can make as many as I want uh, but you'll see this is the car side this is our master now I know in the, in the diagram, the car diagram, it doesn't have this brace up here. Uh, just about all of these cars uh, at some point received this extra brace at the top uh, from the railroad and put it on there. Uh, and that's what we're modeling. Because uh, I'm modeling these in the, in the I'm in the uh, present day NS era is what I'm modeling. So these are going to be old ragged cars that I'm modeling. Uh, but they had the uh, brace at the top added. So and I've, I've done that here. And I've cut out the little waffles and added to the car side as well. Uh, now on the 100 ton, you know, they're, they're broken up. So there was a little more to that one. Uh, and I wasn't going to do that four or five times. You know, twice side per car. Uh, so that's where I decided to make the molds. Uh, but you can see in the picture all I did was just draw it off on the cell sign, cut it out, mount it to the balsa wood, cut my strips for my bracing out of the uh, six by six styrene, and then I cut it. I cut the uh, I'm calling them waffles uh, out of the side for cell sign as well, and glued them in. And this is this is where we're at right now. Uh, and I hope that you can uh, you can see from the pictures that I've showed and what I'm telling you is it's simple. Uh, the biggest thing is just scaling it out with your ruler. And like I said, this will translate from H O to O to you know whatever scale you're modeling uh, if you want to take the time to do that. Uh, these are not available in H O as well, so uh, if you want some, you're gonna have to build them. Uh, but. Uh, so once you get your car side, your master car side made, uh, we're going to need to uh, mount this or glue it to another piece of the for sale sign and we're going to make a dam all the way around it. Uh, and then we're going to go and uh, that will be uh, what we use to pour our master mold, uh, our rubber mold, uh, to uh, be able to cast our car sides. But uh, once you get to this point, we're ready to get ready to do all of our prep work for making our mold. Uh, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to mount this on. I'm going to glue this to the uh, 
for sale sign and then I'll come back and we'll make the the dam that goes around it and we'll mix up our uh, our rubber mold. I use a two part um, uh, kit from uh, Smooth On uh, and I'll show you that here in just a minute. So uh, hold tight and we'll be right back. Alright guys, I've moved into the kitchen just to give me a little bit more room. Uh, but what we're fixing to do is make our uh, our dam ready so we can pour our mold, uh, our rubber mix to make our mold. Uh, so what I've done, I have just a piece of the for sale sign. Uh, I've glued the uh, MasterCard side to it for a base. And we're getting ready to put our walls up. And all this is is a foam core board. Uh, you can get, uh, I buy mine the poster size, board size at, at Dollar General for a buck a piece. Uh, and that's all this is. And what we're going to do is uh, I've cut uh, the pieces to the size of the, uh, the base here. And we're going to hot glue it uh, and seal our edges. And uh, we'll be ready to uh, make a mold here for before long. Uh, but I'm going to hot glue this and I'll... Uh, show you uh, what it looks like when it's done. Alright guys, I've got the uh, the dam built. Uh, got my trusty old supervisor Alvin right here. He's making sure I do this right. So, uh, But here it is. Uh, now all I've done is I've taken the hot glue gun and gone around the edges, the bottom edges, and on each up the corners on the outside and the inside. Uh, that'll give us a good seal and we can uh, pour our rubber mold and hopefully not have any leakage uh, but I've done uh, this is the way I always do it and very rarely do I have any problems uh, but this is our dam and we're, uh, we're getting ready to uh, mix up our mix to pour our mold now what we're going to be using I use this uh, this is the best stuff on the market I have found I've had the best success with this stuff here it's from smooth on it's a two part uh, silicone rubber compound uh, it's part A, part B, uh, and you mix it, uh, it's one to one, you know, when you do equal parts of both, mix it together, and then pour your mold, and it says, you know, four or five hour curing time, uh, it usually cures up a lot quicker than that, uh, but I usually let it set overnight, just to be safe, uh, but like I said this is smooth on. I get it off of eBay. It comes in a, a kit, and I think it's like 25 bucks. Uh, and I use the same smooth on resin. Uh, it's two part also uh, from the same company to uh, pour the pour the car, car sides. Uh, but uh, let me get my cups and my mixing bowl and my mixing sticks and stirrers ready, and we'll mix this up and pour our mold. Uh, and hopefully uh, it'll turn out good so give me just a minute and we'll get this stuff ready to mix and I'll show you how I do it alright guys we're fixing to uh, make our mix for to uh, pour our mold I said this is a uh, two part compound you can mix it equal maybe that one that one's going to check it out I've used several different types of uh, this mold, silicone stuff, rubber stuff, and this uh, by Smooth On by far has been the, uh, I've had the best results of anything that I've used. And I hope I have enough to do this mold. Where you at, buddy?
don't think this is going to be enough. We may have to do a double pour. But hopefully I can get a, at least a good layer on top of it. got to the stuff is supposed to be mixed individually very good before you mix it That's what it's going to look like.
that's going to be kind of thin. I'm going to shake it to get all the air bubbles out from under it. Yeah, I'm already, you know, I can already tell them. You see, I've got some thin places right here. I'm going to have to mix up a little bit more and pour another layer on top of it, which will be fine. Uh, and then uh, we'll be ready to uh, pull it out. So let me do that, and I'll be back in just a little bit. Or you copy zero six. All right, guys, it's been 24 hours. We're going to pop our mold out and see how it turned out. Just a little bit of cleanup to do. Not bad. What we'll do, we'll take a little uh, an exacto knife and clean up some of the little flashing off of it. And uh, we'll be ready to pour a mold. Alright, guys, uh, we got our mold cleaned up. Turned out fairly well. Uh, it'll work. Uh, but you can see uh, all the side detail is there. Now I also went ahead and made a mold for the base. Uh, and what these are, these are some HO castings I had for some HO wood chip hoppers. And what I did was uh, cut two of them to fit and made one out of two. Uh, they're a little bit small, but they're uh, they're workable. Uh, the main thing I was going for was the end detail anyway, because uh, really, I mean, you're not going to be looking at the bottom of the car uh, when it's on the layout anyway. But, uh, like I said, that's just castings of two HO bays, and like I said, I had to splice one. Uh, and measure to fit so it'll fit up under the old gauge car but that's the master I put it on a uh, flat styrene base and then cast I made a mold of castings and this is what we'll be using for the uh, hopper base on it the same process as the uh, car side you know you know, mix up your mix and uh, there's your molds so we'll be uh, using that to make the uh, base but like I said that's, that's all that is is two HO castings put together on a extended base just to give it a little bit of height and square it up uh, I said it works good uh, uh, so that's what we'll be using all right guys that's gonna do it for part one of our uh, wood chip uh, hopper scratch build uh, we've got our molds made and ready to go. And in part two, we will pour our car size and our bays and uh, begin assembly. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed part one. I uh, hope you're able to uh, take something away from it that you can use. And uh, and hope you'll, you'll enjoy following along. Uh, I want to say, take a minute and say thank you to all my subscribers. I really do appreciate it. Please like and share this video. Uh, and if you're not a subscriber, please do uh, hit that little subscriber button down there and be sure to ring the little bell so you'll get all the updates as new videos come out on the channel. Uh, but uh, like I said, once again, that'll do it for part one and looking forward to seeing y'all again soon.
Gino for uh, Gino's Trains. We appreciate it. Bye.